Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday worship service. So glad you're joining us today. Our theme today is not alone, not left alone. Have you felt alone during this stretch of COVID? Uh, it's been an odd time for us all. And, and even without thinking about COVID necessarily, we go through times that we feel loneliness. So uh, my prayer today is that during the message, as we focus on not being alone from John chapter 14, that you will indeed uh, feel um, the presence and sense the presence and know the presence through the power of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ with you. And even when you don't feel that he's with you, he is with you. And so that will be the message this morning that I look forward to sharing. Again, we welcome you here. Online services will continue. Uh, we will keep this going. That was our plan even before COVID-19. And so you don't have to worry about the online services going away. Our public worship reopening target date is Sunday June 7th. So we will be taking all the precautions and following uh, health recommendations and all of the rest. You can uh, read uh, details about that in my weekly email, which goes out every Friday. But just so that you know, no one is pressured to come back. Uh, you do not have to attend publicly until you feel comfortable. And if you are high risk, there's no pressure of coming back. You come back when you feel like it is safe for you, but the online services will continue. So again, welcome to the house of the Lord. So glad that you're joining our online service today on YouTube.
We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us. Gracious Lord, amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the sixth Sunday of Easter is recorded in Acts chapter 17, beginning at the 16th verse. While Paul was waiting for them at Athens, he was deeply troubled by all the idols he saw everywhere in the city. He went to the synagogue with reason to reason with the Jews and the God-fearing Gentiles, and he spoke daily in the public square to all ha who happened to be there. He also had a debate with some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers. When he told them about Jesus and his resurrection, they said, what's this babbler trying to say with these strange ideas he's picked up? Others said, he seems to be preaching about some foreign gods. Then they took him to the high council of the city. Come and tell us about this new teaching, they said. You're saying some rather strange things and we want to know what it's all about. It should be explained that all the Athenians, as well as the foreigners in Athens, seem to spend all their time discussing the latest ideas. So Paul, standing before the council, addressed them as follows. Men of Athens, I noticed that you are very religious in every way. For as I was walking along, I saw your many shrines. And one of your altars had this inscription on it, to an unknown God. This God, whom you worship without knowing, is the one I'm telling you about. He is the God who made the world and everything in it. Since he is Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't live in man-made temples and human hands can't serve his needs for he has no needs. He himself gives life and breath to everything and he satisfies every need. From one man, he created all the nations throughout the whole earth. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall and he determined their boundaries. His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, though he is not far from any of us. For in him we live and move and exist. 
As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. And since this is true, we shouldn't think of God as an idol designed by craftsmen from gold or silver or stone. God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times, but now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him. For he has set a day for judging the world with justice by the man he has appointed. And he proved to everyone whose this is by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is recorded in 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning at the 13th verse. Now who would want to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you for it. So don't worry or be afraid of the threats. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. But do this in a gentle and respectful way. Keep your conscience clear. Then if people speak against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. Remember, it is better to suffer for doing good if that is what God wants, than to suffer for doing wrong. Christ suffered for our sins once and for all time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the spirit. So he went to preach to the spirits in prison, those who disobeyed God long ago when God waited patiently while Noah was building his boat. Only eight people were saved from drowning in that terrible flood. And that water is a picture of baptism which now saves you, not by removing dirt from your body, but as a response to God from a clean conscience. It is effective because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now Christ has gone to heaven. He is seated in the place of honor next to God and all the angels and authorities and powers accept his authority. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel reading is recorded in John chapter 14, beginning at the 15th verse. If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit, who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them. And I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If you're happy and you know what, clap your hands. Oh, good morning, everybody. It's good to be with you here again as we're filled with happiness and joy reflected upon the fact that our Savior Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, is now our risen Savior and offers life and salvation to everyone. Last week, we had our friend, our dear, dear friend, Professor Sidney, talk to you about one of the promises of Jesus. He told us about the Heavenly Father having a mansion, a house prepared for us with many rooms. He was going there to prepare one for us. He was given us the promise that because of his death and resurrection, our sins are forgiven, and heaven is our home, our promised home. Well, here today in God's holy word, John chapter 14, we're reading about another promise that our Savior gave to us. He tells us, I will ask the Father, he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. Well, who was he talking about? He was talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who teaches us about everything that he said 
It helps us to understand God's law that shows us our sin when we don't listen to mommy and daddy or we hit baby brother or big sister or we're disrespectful. Those are not things that God wants for us. That there is called sin. And the law tells us we are to love one another. We are to honor our mommy and daddies. We are to remember the Sabbath day. We are to put God first and foremost in our lives. All kinds of truths that shows us when we fall short, when we don't honor God, when we don't show kindness and respect and love towards others. As a matter of fact, we can't do anything to set that right. That's why we need Jesus to pay for our sins, and he did exactly that on the cross. And he saved us from our sin by giving us his good news that he saves us by his grace, his undeserved love. Wow. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, youngins. I know I am. We have a loving Savior. And you know, this here Holy Spirit brings us to saving faith, through holy baptism, through the Word, and it keeps us in that there faith. When we get big, we receive the sacrament of Holy Communion, where we are receiving his forgiveness, life, and salvation as we partake of the sacraments and the Word of God. Well, you know what? When we were baptized, most of us were just little youngins. We probably don't remember that there day. So let me give you a little bit of a homework assignment for this week. I want you to find out with mommy and daddy who was present at your baptism. And maybe, maybe you can give them a phone call. Maybe, maybe you can talk to mommy, daddy, or mamma and papa. Your sponsors who were there, who witnessed your baptism, who prayed for you, and even do to this day, your friends and family, help them help have them help you to understand what happened on your baptism and how was the special day. It is indeed a special day, for God's word tells us, for in one spirit we were all baptized into the body of Christ. That's what the apostle Paul says in First Corinthians twelve. We're reminded that we aren't orphans, we're not left alone. When Jesus went to heaven, God the Holy Spirit still is with us, speaking and bringing us to the one true faith about the love of Jesus and the salvation of God. Boys and girls, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands and share the good news of Jesus, our crucified and risen Savior with everyone. Pastor Hinky, would you share with us a word of prayer? Absolutely, Miss Lucy. Good morning. We pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus to the Savior of the world because we could not even begin to do what was necessary to earn our salvation. We are saved by grace, by your undeserved love, through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And we thank you that even before he was crucified, out of his mercy and love, he promised the disciples and us that he would send the Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit who speaks to our hearts through your word and through your sacraments. The same Holy Spirit who reassures us of forgiveness, life, and salvation in Jesus' name. Be with us, dear Lord, as we rejoice and share the joy that's within us, that's found only in Jesus Christ with everyone. In your holy name we pray as your baptized children. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Henke. Boys and girls, again, God bless you as you share the love of Jesus. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Good morning again. The title of our message today is Not Left Alone from John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. We have had lots and lots of alone time lately with uh, COVID-19 and stay-at-home orders and things like that. And uh, maybe you're thinking too much time alone and you're getting cabin fever and you're ready to get out. And we are slowly reopening as a community and a state. But uh, during this time of being alone, what have you been up to? Have you been reading? Have you been watching TV? Have you done some gardening? 
gardening. I know we've had some cold days and maybe you haven't really planted anything yet, but perhaps you have, or maybe you've been on social media, you've been doing that, or uh, perhaps during this alone time, you've just been doing a lot of resting and uh, maybe even some daydreaming. Uh, so what's it been like being all alone. Have you done some Bible studies? I hope so. I mean, that's very good to do that during this time especially. In our text today, Jesus tells us that he will not leave us, that he will not leave us alone. He promises in verse 16 that he will give us another advocate. In verse 17, he tells us that is the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is our advocate who leads us into all truth. Now, some people's greatest fear in life is actually being alone. Is that yours? But Jesus has promised as his people, he will never, ever leave us alone. Jesus in Matthew 28 verse 20 says, And be sure of this, I am with you always, even until the end of time. One of the greatest attributes of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is that he is omnipresent. That means that he is present everywhere. Now, what a great comfort and peace that is to know that and to believe that through faith. So, wherever we are, Jesus says he's there. So, that's on the battlefield, uh, the nursing home, uh, during a job interview that's making you nervous, uh, in sickness, uh, facing financial uncertainty, marital distress, whatever it is, Jesus says that he is with you. He will never leave your side because he loves you. He will not abandon you because he loves and cares for you. Jesus tells us in John 14, verse 18, No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. That's what our God does. He's the one who comes to us. He initiates. He responds. He is the rescuer. When God the Father saw our sinful conditions and our fallen world, he didn't turn his back on us. He didn't abandon us to hopelessness or despair. No, he didn't. Instead, he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to our aid. He sent Jesus to rescue us from the wages of sin, and that was death. That's what it says in the Bible. And let's face it, we are all sinners. You are a sinner, and so am I. I mean, just look at your life. Be introspective and look at your life. Are your thoughts always God-pleasing? I mean, what you think about? Think about that. Are they? Are your words always full of love and encouragement to other people? Are your actions always full of help and virtuous motives? The answer to those three questions is no, no, and no. No. We have let God down in every way. Line up your life against the Ten Commandments, and you will indeed be convicted. And so will I. But despite all of that, God in His great love did not leave us alone. 
Romans 5, 8, one of my favorite verses in the entire Bible. It says this. Listen to these words. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. When someone lets us down in this life, uh, betrays us, hurts us, angers us, our temptation and tendency is to lash out. It's to get them back. It's to give them a piece of our mind. Or our temptation is even to end the friendship, to leave that person, to cut everything off. Isn't it a good thing that God didn't treat us like that? Isn't it? God doesn't treat us like we deserve. He shows us instead his mercy. He shows us his grace. Jesus was abandoned and left to die on the cross so that we could have salvation and heaven itself, so that we would never be left alone. Jesus' disciples left his side. I mean, on Good Friday, where were they? His best friend John, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, they were there, but hey, where were the rest of the disciples? I mean, John as a disciple was there. Where were the rest of them? You know, you may recall this. The disciples couldn't even stay awake with Jesus and pray with him the day before in the Garden of Gethsemane. So back to the cross. While on the cross, God the Father turned his back on his one and only son who was there on the cross. God did that so that we could be spared, so that we could be saved. Jesus even cried out from the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? As a result of Jesus being forsaken, God will never, ever turn his back on you. Jesus faced all of that instead in our place as our substitute. And when Jesus rose to life on the third day, that first Easter morning, his promise was complete. Our faith in Jesus is not in vain because he is risen just like he promised that he would do. And when Jesus tells us he will never leave us, we can believe that through the gift of faith. Forty days after Jesus' resurrection, he would ascend into heaven. But he did not leave his disciples alone or powerless. Why? Because he promised in verse 16 of our text, another advocate who will never leave you. Who would that be? In verse 17 of our text, Jesus gives us the answer. He is the Holy Spirit. The third person of the Trinity, the one who has given us faith in Jesus, the one who always points us to Jesus, the one who strengthens our faith, the one who empowers us to face all of our tomorrows with hope, with trust, with patience and even with joy. Are you going through something right now that you sort of feel like you're in this silo all alone, and it all depends on you to solve, to figure out, or just get through, whatever you're facing? 
And as you're in this silo, you're praying. You're hoping that God hears you. And you're even hoping that you're praying for the right things. Has that ever been you? Remember, you are not left alone. All because of Jesus. He lives. He reigns. And he's given us the Holy Spirit. Listen to Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 28, and I quote, And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father, who knows all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And it goes on to say, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. What can you glean from those powerful verses I just quoted? Well, hopefully you can glean through the power of the Holy Spirit that you are not left alone. The Holy Spirit prays for you. He he pleads for your cause. And whatever you are facing, God will work it out for the good. You can trust in that. You can believe in that through faith. You are a person of faith through the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to close with this. Uh, I heard on the news the other night that a lot of people during COVID-19 have felt the anguish of loneliness. Has that been you in any way? Especially, I heard on the news, it's been difficult uh, on people who live alone. Is that you? Or people who have a job where they are used to being around a lot of people. Like athletes, I heard, are especially missing the cheer of the crowd and the feeling of approval from their performance because their identity is so tied to what other people think of them and how they get affirmed by other people. To some degree, we are all like this, like I just described. But take heart. You're not alone. You have not been left alone. Your identity is rooted in Jesus Christ. Through the waters of holy baptism, you belong to him. And as Jesus says in verse 18, whenever we feel isolated, lonely, abandoned, or even overwhelmed, maybe that's you right now. No, our Lord says this, No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Those are words of Jesus. From him to you today. You are not left alone. He loves you. He is with you always, even until the end of time. Amen.
now confess our faith and we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead." I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now go to our Lord God, Heavenly Father, in prayer. We pray. Dear Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that because of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we are never left alone. For you are with us. You have given us faith through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is our advocate who always points us to Jesus, who is with us always, even until the end of time. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with our nation and leaders. Give them wisdom to lead with clarity, vision, boldness, integrity, humility, and sound judgment. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we head into phases of reopening our community and state, keep us safe, but also keep us calm, and not to be people of fear, but people of faith, who believe your promises to us, that you will take care of us, that you are our provider, that you are the great physician of body, soul, and spirit, and that you are always in control. Lord, we thank you for all who serve us and sacrifice for us, especially our police, fire, EMT, all first responders, and our military. Lord, bless, lead, and guide our church and academy. May we continue to be people of vision, passion, discipline, and risk as we develop a new three- to five-year strategic plan for the future. Lord God, bless, lead, and guide our search for a director of Family Life Ministries. May it be someone of your choosing, and may we trust you throughout the entire process. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give to you all these prayers in faith and in trust, also any prayers we have on our hearts right now, as we say that special prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray, and we pray it together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the time of the service that we talk about giving opportunities, and I want to thank you for your faithful giving during this time. Here are the three main ways you can continue with your giving. Uh, Number one, and this is the, I believe, the best opportunity and the easiest way uh, to give is to go online to our website and click the Give tab, and it's an easy and safe way to give electronically, and many of you are doing that, and you're finding that it really works well uh, so that you can continue your faithful giving uh, during this time. And even after COVID, it's a great way to keep giving. Uh, the second option is simply this, and a lot of you are doing it and doing it very effectively and with great faithfulness, and that is to mail in your check and uh, just put the stamp on the envelope and mail it to the church. So thank you for your faithful giving in that. And then the uh, third option is just to drop it off at the church office, and a lot of you are doing that. So thank you for being faithful in this time. God is faithful to us. We respond with our faithful living, serving, and giving to Him. We prepare for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you His peace.
Amen.